This is the World Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is Sunday evening, July 16, 2023. This is an uh, evening message. Deny self. Take up your cross and follow me. Or follow Jesus, should I say. Deny self. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. This comes from Matthew 16, 20-28. Now as we read this text, Jesus is going to say the word me because he's the one Who's saying what should be done? Matthew 16, which is our brother already read for us. And we want to draw some parameters here so we can stay in line, stay in step with Christ. Jesus has a wooden cross. Well, this one piece of wood or bark on top, no one cares. It's a tree he was hung on. If they use the term cross because his arms hung down the cross, that's fine. We really don't care. We just know it's a tree. It's the prophecy is, you know, if you're killed on this tree, you're cursed. Jesus became a curse for us. Jesus himself <laughs> did no sin. And this is the thing that we have to understand. You have to keep the thing in context so you can know, well, what am I doing with a cross? Am I dying for the sins of the world? Absolutely not. Obviously not. First Peter 2. Well, I'll draw some parameters here so we can make this lesson straight to the point. 1 Peter chapter 2. You can tell people things. Some things have to be read. And we're going to look at verse number 20. 1 Peter 2.20. But let's go up and get verse 18 so we know what we're talking about. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. He starts a list of individuals who may be suffering. Let's go up a little bit more and get all the meat we can. Verse 17. Honor all men. So that's what our instruction is. 1 Peter 2, 17. Love the brotherhood, that will be the saints of God because the letter is to the saints. So that's why he says love all men. Fear God, honor the king. That will be the king in your land. Prime minister, what have you. Verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the foreign. For this is thankworthy. A man for conscience, for our God endure grief. Suffering wrongfully. So if a man endures grief, suffering wrongfully, that's thankworthy. You should thank God for having experienced that. Verse 20. For what glory is it if you, or uh, if when ye be buffeted for your fault, you should take it patiently? There's no glory in that. You were wrong. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. God's acceptance of something you should be thankful for to experience this. Because there's a blessing in that. As David suffered excessive abuse from Shimei, he said, maybe the Lord will bless me. And he did. Verse 21. For even here unto where you call. This is what you're called for. Christianity is a calling to you of suffering. Maybe not the financial health in there, but the suffering of your spirit. It says Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example. He said, because of that, this is why we must do it, that you shall follow his steps. Who did no sin? That's the text. Neither was God found in his mouth. No action, no words of sin. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. When the Lord says, turn the other cheek, that was a physical time when you need to turn your cheek. If a person that can take your life slap you, you better turn another cheek. Unless you want to die. See, so some people say he didn't mean physics. Yes, he did. It depends on when. If an individual reviles you, don't revile again. Because you're going through a suffering that the Lord recognizes. He trusts me. She trusts me. Now I'm going to bless you. You rise up and do the opposite, the blessing's taken. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteous. Now watch, remember now, Jesus 
This is his walk on the earth. This is his suffering. Who his own self bears sins in his own body. Now that's pretty specific, brethren. On the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were here. The beating Jesus took is as a beating you would give sin. The Bible says, For you were as sheep going astray, but now return unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Now, so we have an overall view of Christ not being a sinner. So now we understand, well, Christ tells us something in this text. Christ carries a cross that he's going to do several things with. He's going to nail the law that's contrary to you and I, our hope of salvation to it. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter number 2. Now remember something. He asks you and I, take your cross and follow me. First he says, deny self. Jesus proved that he denied himself. We just read he didn't curse people out. They spat upon him and then spit back. Uh, he didn't slap them back when they slapped him. Jesus was a young man, 33. I'm pretty sure he could have had a pretty good thrust on some of those individuals. And definitely if they were older. But he didn't do it. So he denied himself. The flesh would have said slap him back. But he did not. See, if Jesus isn't tempted to slap you, curse, bring a curse upon you, spit on you, he didn't really go through anything. The temptation is presented to him, but he didn't act on it. Verse 8. But well, as any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Bear with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. So if you don't have faith, you get baptized, you're still lost. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. So you're dead in your sins your flesh not being circumcised, speaking of a male Gentile or a Jew that refused circumcision or wasn't given it, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of all that was against us. So what was blotted out? It is the law writings that are against you. The things that show you can never be saved. Because you didn't go to worship on the Sabbath, or you didn't bring the right gift, or you disrespected your parents, or what have you. So he says, I'm going to blot those out. That is against the thing that says you can never get forgiveness for that. Which was contrary to us. Took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now that's what he did. Having spar principalities and power, and made a show of them openly, triumphing. Over them in it. Or triumphing over them in it. How do you want to pronounce it? Because you have to also. Also understand. He spoiled those powers. Those principles that exist there. That should not have allowed him to accomplish it. You would do the same. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Or in drink. Or in respect of a holy day. Or the new moon. Or the Sabbath days. Which are shadow of the things. come, But the body is of Christ. Let no man be guile you of your reward. It can be tricked out of your hands. In a, how? In a voluntarily, uh, voluntary humility. You voluntarily making yourself uh, reduced because of the laws of Moses. And worshiping of angels. And true into those things which he had not seen. He didn't see anything. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And I hold in the air from which all the bands by joints, about it, forgive me, by joints and bands, 
having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increasing with the increase of God. The church can only grow spiritually with God. Help. A saint can only grow spiritually with God. Help. That's why Paul said one water, one plant, one water, but only God increases you. If you're not increasing, that's because God's not doing it. And if God isn't increasing you, that's because you don't want to be increased. Well, if you be dead with Christ from the rhythms of this world, of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to audiences? If you're dead with Christ, why are you subject to audiences? Touch not, taste not, handle not. Why would you not eat pork if you're dead with Christ? Why would you not handle a dead body if you're dead with Christ? You would because those laws have been removed, which all are to perish with the using. After the commandments and doctrines of men. All those things will perish. As you use these things. They perish away. They do not remain in heaven. Touch not, taste not, handle not. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom. In will worship. This is your desire and humility. And neglecting of the body. Not in any eye to satisfy the flesh. It does not. And so when you come up with these things. Of watching observing times and eating foods and things. You have to understand, Christ said, okay, I nail that to the cross. I nail that to the cross. And so, our sins have been removed by Christ. Now, well, why is he telling us take up our cross and follow him? Well, let's start back on the text. Matthew 16 and verse 20. Okay. Now let's look at this, brethren. Let's listen to it. So Jesus has a wooden cross. As he's carrying it, he's too weak to finish carrying the wooden cross. The spiritual burden is in him. The sins are placed in Christ. All the sins you're going to do. See, I take that by faith. How can God put everybody's sins that haven't been committed yet? He did. If you don't believe it, yours won't be removed. You'll keep yours. And so Simon... The Cyrenian helps him. The Roman soldiers tell him, hey, help him. Picks the cross up, helps him carry. That isn't going to save your soul. He can't help carry the sins. So you have to understand. So Jesus did take off carrying his cross. You have to carry your cross. Why? Because that is your problem. It is your fault. That burden is yours. That wasn't Jesus' burden. It was given to him. You're not put on a real cross. If you died with a nail on a cross, you die in your sins. So you have to keep the analogy right as Jesus is trying to teach us how do you follow him. That's something that you have to carry and you have to deny yourself. So those two things must be done. Matthew 16 and verse 18. Now let's go to verse 20. Forgive me. Matthew 16, 20. Then charge his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. He has a reason for doing that. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Now listen. Jesus told them it's not time to say this yet. Certain people would, he would say he is the Christ. Certain people would ask, he would say he is the Christ. He has, a, he has a reason. Because if they listen to him, they'll know this is the Son of God. As one guy said, will, Christ do, will the Christ come and do more than this guy? Man, this has got to be him. That's how they're supposed to believe based on what he does, how he proves himself. When John is in prison, he says, ask him, is he the one or should we look for another? He said, he didn't say yes. That's his cousin. You have to understand something. Brother, just as thoughts go in and out of your mind, you get shaky on certain beliefs. You have to understand that's how human beings are. Fear is attacking your spirit. There's so much you don't see. You've been wrong sometimes about things. You've asked stuff for God, and sometimes he says no. So he says, tell them the blind see, the lame walk. He started telling them, remember what they said about what I'm going to do? And they bring that message to John. Verse number 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. What is Peter asking him? 
Don't think that you're going to die. Live. Oh, live. Verse 23. But he turned and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. God an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. What's the things of men? To live. Live life. Live on the earth. It's so beautiful. The people you have, the good food, the accomplishments, they are. But you can't hold on to those when it comes time to deny yourself and die to these things that you may live. See, this is what he's telling us. Watch what he says. Then Jesus said to the disciples, if any man shall come after me, let him deny himself first, take up his cross and follow me. So you deny self. Does that mean you quit working? No. Quit eating? No. Quit living? Quit desiring to get married? Or quit desiring to have kids? Or quit desiring to be single and accomplish all types of life laundry? No. It means deny your fleshly desire that will cause you sin. Will cause you to forget to come to church. You can't come to church no more. Man, I got to feed my family. Can't come to church no more. Don't go to service at all. Come up with some excuse and we never see you. And wherever you worship at, deny self and follow him after you take up your cross. We still got to deal with this cross. So it says, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So if you try to save the lifestyle you have, even if it's a life of just taking care of your kids, your family, to where you just can't worship the Lord, then you have go a a lesson taught to you, you have a lesson taught to you, you're going to lose it. You'll lose that life. You're going to die in hell. And the life you're going to lose is the eternal life. So you've got to read through what he's saying. Every, Moses lost his life, but he's not in hell. Bottom part, he's in hell top part because he's with Elijah and talking to Jesus in the vision they saw. And he says also, whosoever will lose his life, which means to lose those things that prevent you from serving the Lord. Because you deny yourself. Your fleshly desires. He says for my sake. Shall find. See you're doing it for his sake. Shall find it. For what is a man prophet. If he shall gain the whole world. See I told you it's about possessions. And lose his own soul. So you focus on the things. More than your soul. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. So what object could you possess. When they say well you know hey um. Uh, you know, he said you could, you could literally have the whole world. And, and they would come and say, hey, listen, I want to talk to you. Uh, the Lord says, uh, it's time to give a requirement of your soul status. What do you have to give in exchange? Uh, I have the world. The Lord said, no, I'm going to destroy that. So he said, what could you do? Nobody even has that possession. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his work. This is the end of the world. But look at verse 28. Truly I say unto you, there shall be some standing which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of man, king, son of God, give me, coming in his kingdom. That's the church. Because Jesus is going, Jesus is in that. He's in that kingdom, ruling. That kingdom has come down earth and he sits at the throne in heaven ruling. And it comes and you see this isn't the end of the world. Anybody standing there is dead. They're dead now. We still, he still brought the kingdom down. The kingdom is down. There's no kingdom to bring when he returns. Brother, an easy way to kill. Jesus is not bringing a kingdom when he returns. The second time. He's coming with his angels to destroy. That's verse 27. To destroy the wicked and give reward to the righteous. This is the kingdom coming, the church. My goodness. Because it's one after the other, people think, okay, that's the end. No, the end is the first one. What kingdom is Jesus going to bring when he comes back? Let me show you 1 Corinthians 15. He's going to give the kingdom back up when he returns because it's already here. So when he comes the second time, he's not bringing anything but rewards and damnation to the wicked. 1 Corinthians 15. We want to tag this before we go any further because because people see that transpose, they think, oh, that's the end. No, it is not. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse, if you will, look at number 
Let's go to verse number 45. And so it is written. The first man Adam was made a living soul. The second man Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural afterward, that which is spiritual. Adam is the natural, Christ is the spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly, the second man is the law from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. God has to tell you how to be heavenly. And it's not by saying a sinner's prayer. And it is definitely not by getting baptized in some denominational church. You have to be added to the Lord's church by baptism going through the door of Christ. And that's the only way to get in and not be a thief and a robber. He says, verse 49, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither the corruption inherit incorruption. But all I show you mystery, we shall not all see, we shall all be changed. In a moment, a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corruption, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. He says, so when this, watch this now, when this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this martyr put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So we still see people dying. Death is not swallowed up yet. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the law. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Now that's the end. Do we still see death? Yes. So let's go further back. Now let's watch the resurrection. Which will show you what is he going to bring down. Let's see if he's going to bring down a kingdom when he comes. Okay, look at verse 21. For since death came by man... By man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as an Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit after they that are Christ at his coming. Then come at the end. You see that? Then come at the end. Now death is still here. So that's not the end. This is the end coming. When he shall have delivered up, delivered up, delivered up the kingdom to God. That means the kingdom is here now. So Christ is not bringing a kingdom when he comes the second time. Because the kingdom's already here. Even, he says, to God, even the Father, whom he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign. So he had put all enemies on his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So there's no victory celebration until death is destroyed. For he put all things on his feet. But when he said all things are put on them, it is manifest. That he is accepted, which did put all things under him. God is not under Jesus. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Now, Jesus is not bringing back a kingdom when he returns. The kingdom has already been brought in. So let's go back over. We want to make sure we keep this right. This is so easy for you to explain when you're talking to people. Matthew 16, again, look at verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his word. That's the end. There we go. We just read it. Verse 28. Truly I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The kingdom coming is when the Lord brings it down. Let's go to Acts 2. One thing, because this is part of his teaching. We want to make sure we get this down. Acts chapter number 2. That's what we're really going to Acts chapter 1. Now the Lord was asked a question. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When therefore, Acts 1 6, they will come together to ask him saying, Well, without this time restore the kingdom to Israel. And he said, it's not for you to know the times and season which the Father put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to all the uttermost parts of the 
earth. And this is what he tells them. Now watch this. What did he say? What's the signal? The signal is the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what does that mean? When is the kingdom restored? That's when the kingdom is restored. Now remember, he's got a brand new king. He said that some standing here will, will see the kingdom come. Now watch what happens in Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost, verse 1, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like it was fire, and as it sat upon each other, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the signal, brethren. Began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. This is the signal. Now the kingdom has come down to the earth. And this is the signal. Jesus will never bring a second kingdom down to the earth. So therefore, when the Lord returns, he's not bringing anything again but the reward. And he's going to bring damnation and punishment to those who are not members of the church. And you and I want to be prepared for that particular day. So now let's go. Now we've seen here and understood. Christ says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Look at Matthew 11 and verse 28. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Matthew 11 and verse 28. Are we in the kingdom right now? Let's get one more piece of proof. Let's go get one more piece of proof. Look at, if you will, the book of Colossians. Because we may run across Jehovah's Witness that will lie. Say it's not here yet. So uh, let's go. We're going to see the actual word kingdom. And Paul, for some odd reason, thought he was in it. So he's got to be telling the truth. Look at Colossians chapter 1. And look at, if you will, verse number 12, Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks to the Father, which had made us meet or acceptable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. And we see that. That means it's here now. And when we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Kingdom's here now. Final nail in the coffin of false doctrine teachers. Now we'll go back to Matthew 11. And let's get verse 28. Look what Jesus says. Come unto me, all ye. Matthew 11, 28. That labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Sin is heavy. The Hebrew writer tells us that. Lay down the heavy weight that easily besets you, causes you to slow down. And sin. Y'all two areas. Weight and sin. Jesus says, it's too heavy for you to carry. He says, I'm going to give you rest. But you do pick something up. Matthew 29. Of Matthew 29, verse chapter 11. Take my yoke upon you. All right now. And learn of me. By meek and lowly in heart, you shall find rest of your soul. So you lay, bring your heavy burdens to the Lord, he says, and I will give you rest. But you get a yoke placed on you because you got to plow like, like an ox. You have a yoke on you. You got to be yoked to the Lord. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So therefore, the law says, deny himself, take up your cross and follow me. He denied himself, took up his cross, and led the way. So now you have to do it this way, brethren. Look at one more piece here before we get ready to wrap up. Luke chapter 14 and verse 25. Luke 14, 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother, and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life. See that? Also, he cannot be my disciple. Why would the Lord say, Oh man, you gotta hate all these people? And it don't mean hate like I hate you. Let's look at the word hate. 
And we'll show it. I said this, we want to use what this word hate means. This H-A-T-E. In Luke 14 and verse 26. Hate his own life. The word for hate. G3404, G3404. This word means to detest. Especially to persecute. So you're not going to persecute your mama or your own life. You'd end up killing yourself. By extension, to love less. So of the meanings we know, love less. You have to love your family less than Jesus. Jesus has to be the first priority in your life. That doesn't mean you don't take care of your bills and serve your family. No, or ever see them. It's that you love Jesus more than you love your family. So when the family says, you know, well, we go to this other church, you say, well, I have to go to Church of Christ to be saved. So I see y'all after service when I, I come by and eat dinner after service because I got to go to church here. It's just that simple. Uh, your own life. I want to play golf. It's Sunday morning. They paid for me to play free 18 holes. That's where my boss going to get good fellowship with him. I'll be there. I'll catch y'all on the fifth hole because I got to go to church. If that's a problem, this is not the job for me. One of the things you have to understand with jobs, brethren, is this. You have to know if you're too greedy. You got to know when you're too greedy. You know you're too greedy when you eat your stomach full. You're like, oh, I can't take another bite. Because you know you start coming up around your throat like a, a pressure. Hey, man, you're going to throw up. Well, you got to know you got too much stuff. You got to know, okay, you know, hold on now. I got to go to church to one of the service. We got two, so I'm going to catch one up. Well, you know, this means a lot to Bob. I'm, I'm sorry about you and Bob. I'm going you know, you know, you know, are you challenging my religion? You don't think I can get another job? See, one thing to do in your training, whatever you learn, learn your skill well. Whatever you do, brother, I encourage you. Learn your skill so well you're a master of it. So they'll be begging you. They'll beg you. Learn your trade. That's a secret in success. The Lord says, serve your master like you serve me. You don't see what he's doing. He's showing you're going to be so you're gonna be like Joseph. You'll see the cart blanche Joseph had. He knew everything about Papa. Except Papa knew one thing. I know what's on my plate right now. I got some beans and some food here. As far as what's in my bank account, I don't know how many employees. I don't really know that no more. He handled it. Master your skill. Serve them good. And when it's time to say, I got to go to church. Have not I served you properly? I got to go to church. Can we work this out? See, sometimes we drag in and battle, do a good job. We blessed they haven't fired us yet. They want to go to church. Wait a minute. Let's perform at the top level as best you can. Because as you're serving, don't you know the Lord said, I'm going to bless you. When you want to go to church, they're going to let you go. But you've been dragging around halfway, show up, talking bad about boss. Yeah, I don't like me. Watch out. See, because you just disrespected God here. Now you want him to bless you over there. You can't. Now he's still telling you, you better come to church. See, understand. Look how God makes everything fall together. Just trust him, brethren. He'll save you. He'll rescue your life. He'll let you know how to make friends. Brother Fritz taught a biblical lesson on this. Of the mammon on earth. You got to know how to handle that. Understand that. You know, because you need that money to make. You can't, you can't steal. We got to earn our money the right way because we're saints. And so therefore, he says, so love them less. You cannot be my disciple. Whosoever does not, and conjunction, this is extra, verse 27, Luke 14, 27. Whosoever shall not bear his cross, watch that, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Brethren, sins are nailed to the cross. Okay. This is one thing we got to understand. But brethren, you have to understand something. Your cross, you bear, you have to recognize and accept. If you had a baby before you got married, that's fine. But you better take care of that baby. Take care of that baby. You a man, you had that baby, you know, you moved on like, yeah, but you need to feed that baby, son. Because that's your cross. You understand what that cross is? That's your child. You have some connection. Take care of you, but you're still going to have a distant connection with that child. You have to, or else you're not having your business right. And this is what Ishmael did with Abraham. That's why you see two people mentioned bearing Mo Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac. 
Obviously, the man that's connected to his family still is obviously connected somehow to Ishmael, some connection. He didn't disown him. So you have to understand that, brethren. We, we got to have a comprehension of that. So you must bear your cross. If you've robbed something, you got community service due. You're going to do the community service. Tell them about Jesus. Why y'all picking up paper? Hey, man, y'all been in the church of Christ? Tell them about Jesus. They picking up paper. Whatever the choice, you, you got to bear that. Follow him. Deny yourself. You still got to do the righteous words of the law, but you must bear that burden. People can help you with it as Simon and Serena and help Christ to cross. But the thing you did is attached to you. You must own that. That's you. Deny self and follow Christ. You're not going to get rid of that particular thought. If you can hold on to that, then God will bless you. We read even the forgiveness of sins. That's what Christ did for you and I. And so let's read some more here and then we, we're done here. He says uh, that for which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first and count the cost. You have to count the cost. What does it cost to be a saint? You have to deny self. Somebody said, well, I work hard all week, but at the weekend I get so drunk, man. I have to call a Uber. You know, I'm drunk, man. Talk from the floor. Up. Well, you got to understand, you're not denying yourself. You didn't count the cost. And whether he has sufficient to finish it. Can you finish it? You know, Christianity is too hard, man. I don't know if I can stand this marriage. You need to. You have to finish it. Deny self. Let's have it after he had laid the foundation and not even finish it. All that, behold it, begin to mock him. I've seen buildings like this. And trust me, people make fun of him, man. He couldn't finish. That was a big hospital in Houston area. And the king was there. I used to work out there. They stopped building for a long time. It was lit with lights, but half built. And the guy told me, he said, they ran out of money. Let's get another uh, financer, and it's done now. I wanted to say, why did they stop? I thought it was the COVID. They were broke. Rich people get broke too. Saying this man be, had to build, but was not even finished. They, gonna, they mock. He's telling you, you'll be mocked as a saint. He started out good, but he couldn't finish. He couldn't fit. Boy, he used to come to church every Sunday. You can't find him now. You can't. You go to the golf course, you'll find him. Four, you'll find him all day long over there. Or what king going to make war against another king, sit it not down for us to consult it, whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. See, the problem gets heavy for you. You know, girl, I'm going to be with you till the day I die. I'm going to die in your arms. And then, you, and then before you know, you're talking about, I think it's time you go to your mama and you know, you know, well, what happened? You ran out of steam. The battle was too fierce. You should have counted, you know, what will happen if she does this or if he does that? See, you got to count the cost because the Lord going to hold me accountable for this relationship. You know, you have to teach the truth in season and out of season. You know, people start pressuring you. Look, you know, everybody's quiet right now. Baby, don't, don't, don't bring that one true church stuff in there, please. Everybody happy. Grandpa here. You know, well, you know, okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, if don't nobody bring up Jesus, it's fine. Let somebody say Jesus is on, because we're going to talk about it. Don't nobody say nothing crazy, because I'm coming in here. I'm not going to deny who the Lord is, you know, and I did. If not, then I won't show up at all, you know. And then people have to understand that that's what love less, you know. If you don't come up in there talking that Church of Christ stuff, don't come. Thanks, Grandpa. I'll see you maybe next year then. See, you got to understand something, brethren. You gotta, that's a challenge to you. You know, that's a challenge to you. You know, because I'm telling you, they're going to bring it up to you. They're going to challenge you. You know, you know, my pastor said, yes, that's it. That's it. The gates have been lifted. It's time to talk now. You should have told them to be quiet. All you got to do is wait. God going to open the door for you. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassage. And it's our condition of peace. You know, one of the main understandings of 31 and 32 is Jesus came to tell us, my father is going to send his army and he's going to burn this world. And all the stars and the moon is going to be rolled up. And I just came to get y'all ready. I'm, I came to be the peacemaker. You have peace if you come to me. So we, we're left with this job also. We come and tell you, hey, we be from the Most High God, and uh, we've come to tell you the way you've been worshiping is false. He's angry, 
He wants to kill you, but he said if we can get you to let us unlock your sins, unshackle you in your paper form without change, he'll save you. We're going to show you how. You get to talk about, I'm already saved. I already know the Lord. Okay, now see, when the war starts, it's too late. He said you got to look a fall. He, ain't, he hadn't come yet. Well, what do you want me to do? But see, when you come with them, with that army of angels, <laughs> man, you wasting your time. You're going to be running and saying, hide us from the face of him that's sitting on the throne. He's going to be mad. So he says here that, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaken not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. All. Deny all you got. Take your cross. Your burden. Follow Christ. Because you've taken the yoke. That's light. All you got to do is believe what he says. Yoke to the Lord. Your faith. You believe what he says. <laughs> you know. The best way you can help a person. I found out. One of the best ways. Is just tell them. You know what you say in your mouth. You can't even read. That's how I know you lie. And you should know you lying because you can't read. I told a guy all day, I say, you've been talking a long time, but you haven't read no text. He said, I've been reading. I said, no, you didn't. You read a text and what we hear is you. How come you can't just read the text and stop because you know it isn't saying what you're saying? He knew that. It's, it's the way, brethren. As painful as it is, it's the way. Because remember, if you don't rise up, Ezekiel is If you don't rise up and speak, you're not a good watchman. The Lord cannot use you. And we want to be good watchmen. You don't have to be rude. Just tell them the truth. Just tell them the truth. God bless you. Take up your cross and follow Jesus after you deny yourself. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 3. The Bible says, For I deliver unto you first of all that which also I received, I Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose the third day according to the scriptures, that he was seen of Cephas, and then of the 12, look at Mark 16 and verse number 15. Jesus said, Go into the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom he crucified. Both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Said to Peter, to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. And you shall see the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, your sins have been removed. The Holy Ghost is in you. Now you take your cross. You are denied yourself. And follow Christ. For the promise unto you and to your children, all that I fought, even as men of the Lord God shall call, remember the words that he testified and exhort. See, this is what we do, exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were asking about 3,000 souls, and they contend steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Notice that. Fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers, Acts 2, 47. Praising God, having faith with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Look at Acts chapter 8 and verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture to the eunuch and preached unto him Jesus. Not Moses, certainly not Mohammed. As they went on the way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water to hinder me to be baptized. Philip said, if thou believe it, all thy heart, thou mayest. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You'll never get a Muslim to say that one. And he commanded the child to stand still. They went down both to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. Now the rejoicing begins. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Whether we be bond or free. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. What is the body? Colossians 1, 18. Colossians 1, 24 says the church is the body of Christ. You know, when you hear. You know, I remember when I was listening to brethren preach. I said, man. I say, this is the first people I ever met. That just consistently speak from the Bible. Mm. Until you start running other subjects other than baptism. And I heard more lies than I could count. And I knew, well, that's why I got to go to work. 
I said, that's amazing when it gets to baptism, we read. Past baptism, we talk. It won't get into heaven that way, brethren. Can't get to heaven that way. 1 Peter 3, 21, the like figure, why to baptism does he even also now save us? Not the putting away of the, filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to our God. By the resurrection, Jesus Christ has gone to heaven on the right hand of God, angel, authority, and powers, being made subject unto him. Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some in the prison. That you may be tried. Yes, shall have tribulation in ten days. Be thou faithful in the death. I will give thee a crown of life. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, brethren. You have to accept it in heart. If you need to be baptized, stay standing. Hold your hand up. If you need prayer, stay standing. Hold your hand up when we rise up. And listen to the message. Uh, when you touch this information under the title, you tap it. You tap it again. That was a list of numbers that come out. You call those numbers. Maybe you're contemplating abortion. As long as the Lord let me live, I have found out. I'm going to talk about this till I die. You want to kill your baby. But you got to stop and say, listen, I don't want it, but God do because it's here. If I have it, I'm going to give it away. That's your second best option. Your first is to raise your child. But there's hope for you if you don't kill it. Don't let your boyfriend kill it. Don't let your husband kill it. I don't care if your boyfriend got a wife. Don't kill that baby. Forget him and her. Had a baby. Get a baby. To the authorities. They were glad to receive. There will be no retribution against you. Because they just. No this is a, a precious life. We can have. This could be the next leader of our whole nation. Don't let these fool doctors tell you. Because they don't care about nothing. That abort. They don't care about nothing. Until you put a knife to their throat. Then they got a question mark. Why? Nevertheless, do what the Lord has told you. You can bring life as a female to the earth with the help of a male. But don't kill it. Don't kill yourself. That's a life that belongs to the Lord. Don't kill someone else. That life belongs to the Lord. You're tired of your marriage? Run out the door like it's on fire before you kill anybody. Do you know nobody will? Do you know if you ran out of your house from your husband or your wife and just ran down the street? You know no policeman going to stop you? Why are you running? That's you and something. You just run. till you're out of breath. I'll never go back to that house again. Just keep walking. If you kill them, they're going to be looking for you. The neighbor's going to tell. Family going to tell. The police going to hunt you. Now you're going to be on TV. And you need to go to jail and to hell. Just leave. You're not their life. You're not Christ. Just leave. There's no acceptance of foolishness like that. There's not enough money in the insurance policy for you to go to hell for. You think you can just kill somebody and get forgiven. Let me tell you something. When the Lord tells you certain sins are grievous, you better hear him. It's hard to let go of stuff like that. People can tell you all that foolishness all day. Sin, sin. Yeah, I haven't seen that in the Bible. I saw all sin is unright. I've never seen all sins are the same. I've never read in the Bible all sin. I say I've seen all sin is unrighteousness. All sin is transgression of the law. It's unrighteousness. Sin is unrighteousness. I've never seen all sins the same. When you find it, can you please give it to me so I can say I'm sorry for sinning? I've never seen it. So whatever you need from the good Lord of heaven, come now together. We stand and sing the Elvis invitation.